I do most of my art and coloring on this channel with colored pencils, but I love trying other media too. So today I'm learning four new art styles and I'm doing it with the help of four different artists. I think you're really gonna like it. First, I'm finally learning watercolors with the help of Christy Rice. Thank you for joining me. Oh my gosh, thank you for having me. You have no idea how excited I am. Christy's channel is all about watercolors and finding an escape in the creative process. I love her mantra of art for joy's sake and how her loose florals reflect that creative freedom in such a beautiful way. For someone like myself, who is a total newbie to watercolors, this feels like the perfect place to start. Give them a spritz, juice them up. Like a lot of water, right? Is there too much water? Can you add too much water to watercolors? Yeah. Here's the thing about watercolor. I believe that it is the only medium that keeps living on the paper after you've placed it on the paper, which is cool, right? Because that means it's doing awesome things without you touching it anymore. But at the same time, it's also the source of much frustration for beginners. There is a certain measure of surrender that watercolor requires of us. We just need to be okay and accept that we're not in complete control. There's a, a trifecta of techniques and I call it wow. And it's wet on wet, wet on dry, and wet on damp. So there's two more techniques that I think are pretty integral to, you know, a beginner watercolor journey. Now I have given them new names because I am the queen of renaming things. Yeah, so I've, I've heard this and <laughs> I approve. So we've got what I call ombre. Not that I invented the word, clearly I didn't. Traditionally, that is the pulling technique. And then we have the flooding technique, which is traditionally called charging. Charging sounds very violent. This technique, we're gonna start with ombre. And I'm just gonna grab a little bit of pink and a little bit of red on one brush. And I'm just going to lay down a little stroke, like a little tiny rectangle. I'm gonna rinse my brush. And I'm gonna go right next door and do it again. Ah, uh, the ombre, I can see it already. And there you have it, you have your ombre. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of pink, a little bit of red, and I'm going to just make a little swirly splotch. And then just for fun, I'm gonna grab a little fluorescent yellow because that's how I roll. And you're gonna start to push that first color around with the yellow on your brush. And you're basically mixing on the page, right? Grabbing some water now, and I'm gonna start flooding. Flooding feels very literal. Charging is like, what does that mean? <laughs> You want to paint a flower? I do. So I'm making some progress in my watercolor journey, but this is only one way to learn watercolor. So I've decided to learn a completely different style as well with the help of another watercolor artist, Scott. Scott's watercolor style is unique in that each layer has distinct edges and he works with bold black lines, kind of like my coloring pages. He creates some incredible portraits on his YouTube channel, and I can't wait to learn more about his stylized technique. I think you're really gonna like it. I use really three colors for, for a Caucasian skin tone, and that's uh, Windsor Orange, uh, my pink Rose Matter, and Windsor, Windsor Purple. Those are my three colors that I use. So I have a permanent rose, not a Rose Matter. Okay. Well, you could try, yeah, let me see. It might work, yeah. What I what I like to do, and, and you can kind of see it here, is I like to, I like to where you can see the edges. I, it kind of gives it a graphic feel. If you look at the shoulder, mm -hmm. you can see there's one layer of Windsor uh, orange, the second layer of Windsor orange. It, it's, it's very stylistic. It's not like, hey, this is how you do watercolor at all. This is how I do my watercolor. That's all it is. The next thing I do, just so you could see it, is I blow dry it. Yeah. First. But what I do is I blow dry and then I'll put on a second layer and then I blow dry and I put on a third layer and I'm layering them on top of each other to kind of give them that graphic kind of... So they're not actually blending. They are layered. I don't let them blend. Yeah. They're layered. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It's pretty light now. I'm pretty much just painting with water, but that's working. <laughs> Does it look like, it looks kind of like this shape? Yeah, it's starting to look like that now, okay. so we're all good. All right, so go get yourself a blow dryer. 
and you're gonna put it on hot, the hottest one. Okay, now before you do it, for the sake of people watching, you gotta shout, blow dryer. Say it, say blow dryer. Blow dryer. There you go, now let's go. I'd never dare put it that close to my art with pencils because it would start to melt everything. <laughs> right. And then that's it. And then I'm gonna blow dry, so blow dryer. I think your definitions are darker. Maybe I need a little bit more paint on that round. Blow dryer. And I'm gonna do my next layer. And when I do, I'm leaving room for that second layer. You don't wanna cover it. Yeah, I see. But the trick with watercolor is you're gonna work your lightest colors to your darkest colors. That's, that's the, the, the number one tip is you go light to dark. And so you're going to yep. always start off with your, because it's, it, it, they build on top of each other so well, um, but you can't, yep. they're not opaque. So you, it's, it's like, uh, it's like cellophane overlays, you know, you, you can't make it lighter. You can only make it darker. And so that's why you just, you do this. Yeah, that makes sense. So, um, I'm going to do just a little touch of wherever the shadow is with the purple. I had a too much water incident of the blow dryer oh, no. sending the water running. This is another thing I'll do from time to time. You see the green where yep. it's wet. I'm going to want to say I want to make this part a little lighter. I could just take a, you see that? Yeah, Listen. that's cool. Just with the, just with the, so while it's still wet, you can just take a paper towel and you can just dab it and that'll give you that kind of thing. If you ever, Went, ooh, that's a little too much. Just paper towel and you're good. That makes sense. I'm having fun. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Yeah. It's a it's a technique that I think is really fun to do a layer, dry it. Do another layer, dry it. Yeah. And then the, the inking gives you such a fun foundation that you, you can be loose with the watercolors. They can just kind of just splotch around. You can buy some of Scott's original sketches or artwork from his website and even download some of his drawings for free as coloring pages to try his style for yourself. Now, I really like this style. I think um, I've been really impressed by your feed for a while just because it's it's fascinating and it's beautiful and it's so unique. Oh, thank you. And I love it. So thank you for teaching me this stuff. I'm oh, really course. excited to have a play with this properly myself. I'm going to create a new coloring page to use as the base for my own watercolor project and for my own attempt at this style. I want to draw something new, but also create something that can become a part of the coloring book that I'm creating that I hope to release later this year. But while I'm getting this ready, let's check back in on my first project with Christy, where I'm still getting my head around the basics. So we're gonna start wet on dry. My brush is damp. I'm gonna pick up a decent amount of color. Start by just making a few strokes. Notice right away, I'm getting some texture. I'm okay with that. I'm going to just yeah. run and I'm going to make this first petal so you can kind of see where I'm going with this. A collection of strokes that kind of work with the pressure I'm applying. Applying more pressure towards the middle of your petal. That's going to give you more coverage. The bottom doesn't look quite as neat as yours. It's okay. I'm going to be working around an imaginary center. I try to make sure that each of these petals has its own personality. So this one's kind of curving starting to go towards the right and then it's curving back to the left. How you feeling? This is good. This is fun. I feel good energy. Yeah, I'm having fun. <laughs> Your face looks relaxed. That's a good thing. So I'm going to show you one of the many zillion ways that you can paint a leaf. You make a stroke. I'm pressing pretty heavily. I'm almost like I've got my bristles so bent here that it's almost like a 45 degree angle. So press drag, lift, and each time it's just getting shorter. Press, drag, yeah. lift, press, drag, and lift, press, drag, and lift. You could go in and dab in another, yet another green, 
in areas, maybe under here for a little bit of shadow. But you gotta get it nice and juiced up with color. Press and lift, press and lift on either side of like an invisible vein, if you will. I'm enjoying the process. It's not frustrating and that's a really good thing. I think that's probably the most important thing about this experience. No, I have to stop now because I'm worried I'm going to wreck it now. So, all right. Ready? Ready. Here we go. Woohoo! All right. Oh my gosh. I love it. It feels good. Let me tell you one last little tip for today and you can play with this, okay? There's a technique called lifting. I can show you a little bit here. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to add some water to this green area and I'm just going to kind of scrub lightly and then you can either scoop it up with a dry brush see how i'm removing some oh wow the color yeah and and or blocked all right so i think uh, it's time for me to have a go for myself <laughs> i can't I'm, I'm, no i'm actually not nervous but i'm actually really excited this is really exciting actually I Christy, you're a really good teacher. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I'm ready to try this for myself. Both a loose floral watercolour scene and a watercolour portrait with the artwork I created earlier, which I've now retraced onto my watercolour paper. Because apparently my printer doesn't like this thick paper. So far, I've been using the Windsor & Newton watercolour palette that both Christy and Scott recommended to me. And I'll include a link to this and all the other supplies from today's video in the description below so you can see all the supplies that these artists have recommended and that I have been using. But for my floral watercolour scene, I'm going to be using something different. A little present has arrived from Christy. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> that is an interesting colour palette. I'd be very interested to see how these colours work together. I didn't even know these existed before we did this video. Oh, these are so cute. Oh, I love this. Look, they all have little sayings on them. Dive right in, find your weird. It's just paper, forget the rules. Happy painting. What a color curious. Since Christy sent me her watercolor palette, I want to use it for this rather than using the Windsor & Newton palette. But the color choices here they're really unique and I'm feeling a little bit intimidated by them, but I guess in a way this becomes my restricted colour palette. It's a very unique colour palette and I've seen some of the stuff that she's created with this and it is beautiful, but I feel like this is going to be a challenge for me. I'm going to have to swatch these out. Swatching the colours out has given me a lot more confidence already in seeing just how much variety I can get by layering and mixing these colours. And the fluorescent yellow that I thought I would avoid is now possibly my favorite color. It just brings the other colors to life in a way I didn't expect. I don't really have a clear plan of where I want this piece to go, and I'm not really sure about the different techniques that I'm using here, but I'm having fun experimenting. I'm trying to use more water and less paint and watch how the colors interact with each other and with the water on the page to create different effects. Some of it is creating really interesting results and some of it is just a little muddy and messy. I think my biggest challenge with watercolor is not going for the super bold colors and that completely opaque look that I'm used to with pencils and markers. Working with transparency and mixing is probably my biggest challenge, and I definitely forgot that you can't layer watercolours in the same way that you can layer other types of paint. Which gave me a chance to experiment with trying to remove the colour with paper towel and reactivate the watercolour that is already dried, and this in itself was a fun experiment and taught me something new. I don't really know when to stop or what my end goal is here. So I think I'll finish up shortly and revisit these watercolors again another day, but I am really happy with this piece for my first watercolor effort. And I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. I think watercolors have found a new friend in me, but I've got more art to do. So what's next? I've had my eye on these chunky paintings from Josie Lewis for ages now. They are so satisfying to watch and I'm sure they can't be as easy as they look. 
so I've invited Josie to teach me. I cannot wait to see what happens. It's going to be amazing. Um, I should probably pick some colours first, shouldn't I? I really like this set of colours from the Colour Cube, so I've chosen some paints that look similar without actually swatching them out because it doesn't have to be perfect for a project like this. I might also bring in a brighter green like this other colour palette that I've had my eye on. So it will lighten your colours. So I would use a brighter crimson um, rather than that faded pink at the end, unless you want a real pastel colour, which is fine. The modelling paste is kind of like adding white paint. Okay. To your color. Ah, so everything's going to end up a bit lighter. It's it's like a very it's like marshmallow frosting. Oh, this is the fun part. Oh, this is like a video all in itself. Right? <laughs> it's very satisfying. <laughs> it is. Oh, and because it just it's so foamy. I didn't yes. expect it to be so foamy. I thought it would be more pasty than foamy. I feel like I could just spend a few hours just tossing the paint around. Right, I know. Welcome to my world. Why do you think I, I am who I am? So what you're going to want to do is kind of smooth it out as if you were to smooth out a sand castle or something. So you just put it flat down on there and then just kind of roll it back and then kind of like get it thinner and thinner as you go. So you're kind of like rolling it. You're going to use that whole surface. So you'll go. Oh, okay. The whole board. Yeah, 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 yeah. You'll have to kind of roll it out and then what'll end up happening and then flatten it and get the paint off it and then and then flat like flatten it out and then roll it again. So you now have a nice bead on the end. And I'd say that's that's prime to apply to your your canvas now. So you, you wanna line it up like at the very, very top and let it kind of squish out. So now I'm all of a sudden thinking, I haven't watched enough videos and I've watched probably 50 of these. <laughs> right, yep, there we go, it's, it's well. Okay, now you're just kind of rolling it and, and then kind of like you're tapering it. So you just, just keep moving and then lift off. There we go, looks pretty good. Okay, so now put the knife at a 90, so it's at an L shape and now scrape and you're gonna kind of like get a nice bead at the top. So you're going for that nice round bead. So just move it and then tilt it a little bit, a little bit. There we go. And then lift off. Let's see what we got. There is a beautiful bead. Look at that bead. Mm. It is perfect. Give it a little pressure. There we go. Nice, beautiful, very nice. And release. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> well, I mean, perfect probably not the word I would use, but I'll take it. <laughs> what do you do with all this extra paint now? You're going to use it because this is all about a gradient. So you're just going to, you're just going to always, I call ah. it the mother method where you always use You just the mix this paint. to the next one. Yep. You might need a little bit more of the medium. So you can yeah. give yourself a scoop of that. This was definitely the way I needed to start my day. <laughs> <laughs> You want it to kind of like bulge out and then pull. There we go. Perfect. Totally just want to take that and then lick it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. I dropped some uh, medium in my coffee and I didn't realize it was in there. And I took the last sip of coffee and got a big bite of medium. And I guarantee you it is not, uh, it's not ideal. Is flat better? I think doing it flat is a good idea. Doing it flat and then kind of pushing the pressure up and out. So you're, instead of moving the palette, you're squishing it down and letting the paint kind of come out the top and then perfect. Then you're, then you're pulling like even pressure down. Very nice. Beautiful work. Beautiful. Look at that. Look at that. There we goodness go. gracious. Just victory. I My think goodness. we finally got Amazing. it. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> glorious. Glorious. So proud of you. My protege. My student. <laughs> Full credit for all my success from now on. So after finally understanding the movement behind this, I think I'm starting to get into the flow and get a little better at this. Although it definitely isn't as easy as Josie makes it look in her flawless videos. Well, I have to ask you, what is, um, because I see it all the time in your comments. How long do these take to dry? The modeling paste is quicker than the gel. Um, the modeling paste, I would imagine that that piece will be pretty dry by tomorrow-ish. 
Might be, it depends really? on how humid it is where you live. I mean, I wouldn't ship it if you were gonna sell it or send it to someone. <laughs> I wouldn't ship it for at least three days, you know? I could have tackled this on my own, but I definitely would not have got this far and figured this out. So thank you so much for giving me a massive head start. I'm going to be playing with this now for a few hours. I think I'll try and attempt your pedal ones too. We'll see how I go and I'll send you a photo when I'm done. Please do. I cannot wait to see what you create. It is, as you have now discovered, quite addictive. Absolutely. <laughs> After my first semi-successful attempt, I've decided to try one of Josie's other types of chunky paintings that I thought would be easier. But I don't really have any modeling paste left, so I've had to bring out some other supplies. My other modeling paste here is shiny, and I don't think I'll have enough for a full painting, so I'm mixing the shiny and the matte together. And I don't know if that's a really bad idea, or if it won't matter, but there's only one way to find out. I've chosen a new color palette from the Color Cube and I'm going in with a smaller palette knife, but my first few strokes are a bit, I don't know. <laughs> Either way, this is a fun medium to play with. I've been really surprised at just how little paint I've actually used on both these paintings, especially since that is the most common comment that I see on Joyce's videos. She gets a lot of hate over wasted paint, and yet I've used less paint for these than I have for most of the paintings that I've done in the past. And if this is something that you'd like to try for yourself, or if you're curious to try some of Josie's other creative projects, she also teaches many of her techniques on her website, where she also sells her original paintings. I wonder if anyone would buy my original paintings. I think I want to keep this one at least. Forbidden cake. I've made a start on my watercolour portrait and I tried to choose a different set of colours to what Scott suggested because I didn't want my final piece to look too much like his work. Although this might have created an even bigger challenge for myself than I've already taken on because mixing watercolours is not something I'm familiar with. But the best way to learn is to just try. So I'm committed to my choices and to just trusting the process. I am really enjoying using watercolours more than I expected. I've had so many people suggest that I try them and so many other people tell me how much they hate them. So I didn't know what to expect, but I think this might just be my favorite type of paint that I have ever tried. Although I haven't tried gouache yet. And that's where Melanie comes in, also known as Visual Mind. Their channel is full of watercolor tutorials, art journal ideas, and everything you want to know about gouache. So I'm just gonna start painting a red mushroom. So, um, wet brush? I dip my brush into the water and that way I add two to three drops to my paint and I just mix the amount that I want to use for my first shape or layer. Oh, it does feel nice on the paper. Yeah, that paper, it has a little bit of texture but not too much. So it's ideal for gouache. I see so many people try gouache for the first time and they're using the wrong paper and I'm yelling at the screen. Now, if I wanted to add a gradient to this, I'm asking this at a really dumb time because I've already put the first color down, but I'm assuming there's magic here that I can use. It is pretty forgiving and the more paint you already have on there, the easier it's gonna be to blend that paint out because you're gonna reactivate the paint that you have on there and you're gonna spread that around. Just paint carefully on the areas of where you want it to be darker, but a smaller area than the one you want to be darker. Just carefully start. The first step is just slapping on the other color. And then once I've done that, I clean off my brush in the water completely. So I dip it into the paint and then I remove the excess. 
So then you have a brush that's kind of damp. And with that one, you go in the direction of the line that you have created. So in this case, it's a vertical line. So I make sure that with my clean and a little bit damp brush, I follow that line in between where those colors meet. And that way they're blending together. And that's the magic because you don't have to plan everything. So I was right, there was magic. <laughs> yeah. If I want to now actually do a layer without blending, do I need to approach it differently? Do I just need to have less water? You can just create a lighter tone, add a little bit of white maybe into your mixture and just create that shape on top and use less water than with the first layer. Melanie offers more learning resources on their website, including a three-week introduction to gouache course, which I will link to in the comments, along with their channel if you'd like to check it out for yourself. So I'll show you where I'm up to, because I feel like I'm starting to get in a good flow, but I could definitely paint for like another two hours and I've got a lot of work to do. It's looking great already. That's amazing. It's fun. I'm going to really confuse myself this week learning watercolors, then learning gouache, then going back to watercolors, then going to back to gouache again, and then trying to... I mean, you just have to keep in mind that it's a different medium, but it feels different anyways. And as long as you know that gouache isn't just a thicker watercolor, you should be good. Thank you for helping me through that learning curve today. I will keep you updated on how I go. My original plan here was to finish my little mushrooms and then create a whole new art piece. But it's actually been a month since I I met up with Melanie and I've ended up with COVID in that time. So I lost a lot of the time that I wanted to spend on this project and so many others and I've forgotten most of the techniques that they showed me. So I feel like I'm starting from scratch and I wanted to start over on my mushroom too. I wasn't totally happy with the proportions of my first painting, but I didn't want to abandon this idea completely. So I've sketched up a draft outline this time, and I'm starting again with the same palette of dried paint that I was using last time, because apparently gouache can always be reactivated. Because I'm trying to reactivate the paints, I'm adding more water this time. And as a result, I'm finding the lower layers are easier to apply. So that has ended up being a good lesson for me in that maybe I didn't have enough water first time around. I'm thinking more about my composition too, so I hopefully won't need to add as many layers on top of each other, and I'm feeling a little more confident about trying to blend. In fact, the blending is really fun. I can see why so many people fall in love with gouache as their paint of choice, and I'm still getting started as a total amateur here. As I add more layers, I'm trying to use less water and thicken the paint as I remember Melanie told me to do. This paint is really nice to use for fine details and I feel like I have a lot more control than I remember having when I've used oil paint or acrylic paint in the past. Although that might also be a lack of experience at those times. Overall, I'm really happy with how this piece has turned out. I haven't drawn mushrooms before and I haven't used gouache before and somehow I've managed to paint a little mushroom piece that I am actually proud of. But there's still one project that I need to complete. I've been really enjoying taking my time with this watercolour portrait more than any of the projects so far, even with the challenges of being a completely new medium and not being sure how it will look by the end. But as soon as I started adding darker shading to the skin, I starting to doubt myself. It is turning more grey than blue and it's really dark and kind of muddy. And this was either a terrible choice of colour or maybe it's an opportunity to go even darker and lean into some adventurous lighting. So with all the work that I've already done, I've decided to go all in and keep exploring my colours and I'm going darker. When I was doing the watercolour painting with Scott, we just did an eye and even that was a challenge. But now I'm doing eyes, skin and hair. And even with pencils, these are some of the hardest items to colour well. And I'm doing them in a stylized version that I've never really tried before. 
it's totally different to the realism that I usually do with pencils and it's not as forgiving. So I'm kind of in the deep end of this, but I am loving it. This kind of creativity for me, taking big risks, is what stretches me and grows me and helps me to overcome my fear of trying new things. It allows me to get more adventurous when I'm back using my pencils because I take these bigger risks when I'm working with other media too. And sometimes it goes wrong. It doesn't always work out, but when it does, the outcome is far more exciting. Which brings me to the next big decision that I need to make and the biggest risk of this picture. Do I attempt a dark background or leave this as is? Because a dark background will give these shadows so much more context, but I have no idea how watercolors work in large areas or if my technique will work on a large background. Or if I should have done the background first and then masked the rest off somehow. But there's only one way to find out. I'm actually really happy with how this has turned out. I am so happy. And I'm sure if I spent another three to four hours on this, I could find even more details to add. Maybe even some extra highlights or some intricate little shadows. But at a certain point, I just want to stop and enjoy what I've started because this is my first piece. It doesn't need to be a masterpiece. And I am really proud of it. So tell me, which was your favourite piece from this video? The thanks again to Josie, Melanie, Christy and Scott for being such amazing teachers. Please check out their channels and their resources in the description below and let me know what you would like to see me try next time.